Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Yo, 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 MMA rap. <laughs> Your worst rap yet. Yo, 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 you didn't yo, even yo, try. yo, yo, <laughs> MMA rap. Ba, 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 ba. Yo, 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 they love it, dude. Yo, everyone, come on, everyone. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> MMA rap. They're all enchanted it right now, dude. It's okay. We're coming off Christmas. Christmas. And that's a f- Jew saying that. That's yeah. a wild. That's a. Uh, uh, it bothers me a little bit how Christian you think you are now. Get the fuck out of here, dog. I don't. You, you can't just jump into Christ's world. Dog. I don't. I don't think you're, I, you're a Christ killer. The whole your whole life you've been representing Christ's death, oh, and was. now you think because you married a Guido that right. you could come out and start being a Christ lover. I don't lover. think I'm a Christian. I don't think I'm better than any of you. In fact, I don't believe you should judge. And I turn the other cheek. Um. <laughs> Your move, your move, Gomez. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what? I love everyone, including my enemies. Whether that's a, a hooker or someone who's a virgin pregnant, I don't really get it yet. I don't know. All I'll say is this, is that my rational Jew mind dictates that I have to call it like I see it, and it's yeah. just a better holiday. It's a fun it's holiday. It's just better. Yeah. It's the well, kids first of all, love it. Before we get into that, shout out to Yo Creative for supporting today's show. Without, a better product. Yo Creative, without Yo Creative, Christmas comes every day with YoCreative.com, home of the $6 kilo. Support them. They support everything we do. You should be supporting them. Uh, it is a better holiday. The Jews, you know, it's, um, the, uh, so, all right, there's a synagogue in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the houses, the, I, this is what I'm assuming happened. Okay. There's one house that's like, Fire like this house, like and is directly across the street from the synagogue. It's a nice you think house. That's the rabbi. No, what it is, this house is a is a banker, Christ loving house. <laughs> oh, okay, this house is decked out like they have some of the nicest Christmas decorations. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Christmas decorations, and I almost feel like they went, All right, Jews, you think so? And then they started decking their house out to say, Well, we're here and we're ready for war. Now, the Jews, they were like, Go pray in your synagogue, but you're gonna have. Like red and green lights shining on your face the whole time. The Jews retaliated. So oh they said, God. you know what? We're not going to let you outshine us. And they've set up an obnoxious outdoor, like a giant teddy bear with Jew numbers on it. And a giant, Jew numbers? Yeah. Like a Holocaust <laughs> no, tattoo? No, no, no. That's a mean? different number, I guess. <laughs> no, you know, the, the Meshuggahs. The, 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 the Hebrew? Yes. Okay. The Malatkas all over their chest. And he's got okay. a big dreidel. And then there's a giant menorah. Um, all these things, but it's it doesn't work as well. It's not but it's, fun. That's today's version of like a holy war. That's yeah. the closest we get to a religious war in America. The, you know their colors. You know what it is. The problem with Hanukkah colors mm-hmm. and their imagery. It looks like you're celebrating a boy just being born. It's like oh, it's a boy. No, it's Hanukkah. Sorry. What do you mean? It's all blue and there's a bear oh, okay. at the top like a <laughs> dreidel, toys didn't get it. and shit. Okay, yeah. It's just kind of I don't know. Yeah, it's not good. The Hanukkah hasn't been updated for a long time. Like yeah. even they're like they're fancy toy. Like these kids have like an Xbox Twelve, and they're like, we have a top. Yeah, that spins. It's terrible. What are some other Jew toys? I think that's the only one. Just an ATM card. <laughs> Something else. It's not, I can't think of anything. I'm high. That's okay. That was pretty- to the head. Uh, welcome to the show. It's your boy Louis Shea Gomez. Very, very excited about Christmas being yesterday. What did you do with the families? Went to your, went to your, obviously the Italian side of the family. Well, we did at at my house. So, uh, oh, your your new house. Yeah, oh, Dave was like, all right, now. Well, no, my wife wanted to do it, and we have like kind of the biggest house now no, that's in the right. family. It's so it's on the like, fam. it's like, yeah, why don't you all you poor people come over here for a while? No, but Lauren had some family who had come in from out of town and stayed with us. So we did Christmas Eve. At our house, and then Christmas Day we did at uh, my wife's brother's house. Okay, so we did that, and it was a great time. Ate a ton, drank a ton, just yeah. you know all that. Kids loved it. It's really sweet, especially like my my boy's one, so he doesn't really know what's going on. But my uh, my daughter's four now, and she just loves she believes it in so Santa much. deep. Oh deeply, yeah, yeah, deeply believes in Santa. I wouldn't even say she believes. 
she knows Santa's that real. Santa's well, James coming. knows. James knows Santa's real to this day, and he's too old. He's seventeen. Dude, it's getting he, a little he, weird. The kid's constantly humping his hands and writing letters to Santa Claus. This, it's a weird overlap. James, James uh, when he was over at the house uh, a couple weeks ago, he like brought up Santa at one point. But just like with this dead serious thing about yeah. Santa, and it was almost like a weird. We were like, "Oh, oh, wow, he's still no, no, really no. He, in. It's not he's like really it's not a in. game. He like loves Santa. He writes him all letters. Like Santa, like he because he has a plate that he puts the cookies on, and the plate is uh, has like you take a piece of chalk and you can write Santa a note on the plate in chalk, and he's just like Santa, I love you so much. He's like he getting loves- old. James is gonna have a, a girlfriend who's gonna be like James. We have a big problem. I'm late. And he's going to be like, don't worry, let's talk to Santa. We'll figure this out. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know what? I'm sick of your shit, James. It was like, whoa, Santa's watching. <laughs> I'm on the naughty list. Keep with that, with that language. So, um, no, he really believes in, and I think, um, I mean, he's going to be heartbroken. I think he's going, it's going to be like someone died. I'm going to say, James, Santa's not real. And it's You're going to tell him, or are you just going to let him figure him. it out on his own? He hasn't figured it out yet. And he's now he's gotten good. He's so good at like like other kids are so disconnected because their faces in an iPad and a phone all day. Like he's good at like talking and negotiating. So other kids are like, you know, Santa's not real. And James is like, yeah, it's not real for you because you don't believe. And the kids are like, oh, what? And then he's like, dunk. And then he walks away. And that's that. Like my son understands understands because I understand how to keep the magic alive. So now he's going to be devastated. But what I think I'm going to do, somebody mentioned this to me. This is a great way to explain it to him. I'm going to say that um, his stepfather killed Santa. Oh, that's a yeah. good way to and do I'm it. Like, yeah, it's fucking. And it's your crazy. mom watched. Yeah, she like, let it just, happen. I don't understand. She why did they would nothing. Do that. I would never do she that. She picked James. up the phone and she dialed nine one, and then she just waited <laughs> and did nothing else. Santa died thirty eight minutes later. Yeah, your mom could have saved Santa Claus. Really fucked up. Anyway, yeah. he suffered tremendously. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way. What am I supposed? Somebody's got to benefit from this. No, no. Uh, I somebody explained it in a very kind of cute way which is like say yeah santa's not real um but you know or santa 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 the person isn't real but the idea of santa claus is real because we are all santa claus right and now you become okay fine let's role play you be you and i'll be your son james go ahead so james i gotta tell you something what is it daddy uh santa claus uh Mm -hmm. my best friend (laughs) who i love and would do anything for james um Santa Claus, I got to tell you something about Santa Claus. Okay, what do you have to tell me? I feel like at this point, me saying I got to tell you about Santa Claus, he'd be like, okay, he's not real, right? If he doesn't do no, that. No, 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 hold on. We're role playing okay, here. You, you go. Say it again. All right, James, I got to tell you something about Santa Claus. Oh, my best friend? Sure. Tell me whatever you got to. Um, He's black. Oh, Dad, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Dad, uh, <laughs> professional comedian, this guy, <laughs> my dad. All right, Dad, I'm going to catch some Zs. No, James, Santa Claus is not real. He's he's made up. He uh, Come again? Um, yeah, he's not real, but but listen to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're fine. I don't have to do any over-explaining right now. Well, go ahead. All right. What are you going to say? You're good. No, I'm just, you said listen to me, so I'm listening, Dad. <laughs> he's, he's not real. Okay. That's it. Dad, can I tell you something? Please tell me something. You're full of fucking shit. No, are okay? you cursing at me? You're nine. I know Santa Claus. No, Santa Claus is nine. Yeah, I've picked up some curses, all right? I'm nine. <laughs> no, well, here's the deal. No, Santa Claus is, is it's, he's, he's, uh, he's part You're of- stuttering, Dad. He's part of You're all not, of us. What do you mean he's part of all of us? He's, he's a, a big part of fat me. guy who lives in the North you. Pole. Yeah, so see, I am Santa Claus. We are all Santa Claus. That's bullshit. No, stop it. You've been stop telling it. me for 10 years that there's a real fat dude who comes <laughs> down my chimney and gives me a ch- I went to war with my classmates. I look like an asshole right now, Dad. What have you done to me? No, I'm not prepared for this at all. I'm going. I'm, li- not I'm going to live at mom's at all. Oh no, you do already live at mom's. <laughs> you can't live at her more. <laughs> You couldn't uh, let me, Dad, have a rape male role model and believe. Oh, me. Oh, oh, and Vic a good line, here. a good opening line from, from Vic. Parts unknown. The great Can't Vic grab Mysterio one of these, joins the show. Victor, how are you? How was your Christmas? It was good. It was uh, very good. I had a lot of uh, thing, uh, good times. I was sick, deathly ill. I'm sorry, I don't need to cut you off. That. Can you just please ask Coop if he made a fresh pot, or if he simply warmed this okay. cup for me? 
he if doesn't he, know if he warmed it i will i will punch him in the face what because he's been gone the whole time no no i just think that he should learn his lesson by now <laughs> that it's, it's crazy because the, so here's the thing the temperature of this is not as hot as a fresh pot it's still it's, it's hotter it be, so he's stuck this. in the microwave for 20 seconds e- coop come here maybe he put too much cream in it uh, there's a lot of cream but i don't think so does it taste stale Fresh batch. Fresh batch. I swear to God, just made it. You just made this. You can't taste the difference if it's like a fresh cup, a uh, fresh pot of coffee. Um, all of my taste buds have been melted away from from what lying to your son about Santa. From Vic, let me ask you. I I imagine, and I don't know this to be true at all, but I imagine Vic has a big family with a lot it's of. A, uh, it's a fat joke. I'm sorry, Vic. <laughs> no, I'm I just—I imagine hurtful. I imagine a lot of people at Vic's Christmas. Am I right or wrong about Racist that? Racist as well. No, no, we're kind of the opposite of that. There's like uh, there's like seven of us. Eight, we actually eight eight of us. I was so. I was picturing high fifties, low sixties. You know what I am no, they, racist. I'm sorry. Once my dad's side of the family died off, my mom's side of the family is boring. They're not fun. They're like the kind of people that would tell you that Santa doesn't exist. Wow. You know, liars. And I want no part of that. Victor, when did you find out that Santa that didn't exist? I don't know, 11, 12. Oh, well, you were a little that's older. You were older. All right, fine. Yeah. Man, it's a it's totally different from the Jewish perspective. We just always knew. We were laughing at you. Yeah. All of you. Mexican Santa Claus is different. Mexican, yeah. uh, he exists. That's Santa a guy. Maria Claus. <laughs> <laughs> He's a real guy. Santa. Santa Diego. Diamingo. He's like, every hey. year he brings tamales. <laughs> Santa Clasito. You, you can't expect me to make it to every house, you know? Maybe I make it to one, two houses. It's, I'm tired. I'm tired. I need Come to on. take a nap. Maybe Aww. you get your presents around January 16th. <laughs> Yeah, uh, aye, aye, aye. Mexican Santa Claus. It's very funny because Mexicans, they are they were. Where did the sleepy, lazy Mexican thing come from? It was racist. It, was it is unfounded. Of all, of all the stereotypes, it might be the most like uh the the most one hundred and eighty degrees backward from real life. It's crazy. Mexicans are like the hardest working motherfuckers. In I've our never fucking... met a Mexican that is. Listen, just I'm not ready saying to work. Mexicans are better than anyone else. I'm not saying they should be here in this country. I'm just saying that uh, objectively, they work very hard. Puerto Ricans are dirty and lazy. Puerto Ricans are so lazy. I'd say it right to a Puerto Rican's fucking face, dude. Rican... I am saying it to yeah. a Puerto Rican's face. A lazy You're culture. Lazy. Lazy people. Okay, facts. Facts are facts. Mexicans, they're hard workers. They're they're proud people. Yes. They want to I'm too I'm too Americanized. When you hang out with a real Mexican and they're like on a roof in like 95 degree heat and they don't even wince at it. Yeah. They're just doing yard work and crazy. And their wives I say are just they should be lazier. Day. They should have a higher standard for what they're willing to do for the amount of money that they're willing to do it. Well, if they, you know, the dream is that their kids kids will be able to be as lazy as your kids. Mm. That's the American dream. The reality is Americans are lazy. Yeah. I'm not even Very one of these lazy. fucking people, but it's like literally if you do, the average American, I don't know, but I had a guess. The average American probably works less than 2 hours a day. Like actual work. The average American, average you're American, way off. You think more? Oh, you're saying actual work actual as work? In, okay, so you're not measuring clocking in, clocking out. No, no, no. I'm talking about actual. I don't work. know if there's a, if there's a way to actually uh, have Quant- those numbers. You might that I think you might be right about. I I think probably le- well. The reason I say the average is because there's certain people that genuinely have to work front to back nine hour. People have hour really hard jobs. Yeah, yeah. But then I think the average office worker, which is makes up a very large percentage mm-hmm. of people, right? The average people that just have your your whatever. I think there's a lot of sitting at their fucking desk. And wasting time. Yes. As much wasting time as possible. Tons. I think, I, I mean, like, I think there's probably a lot there's of There's no real who way work, to find out like, the answer. 15, to this. 20 minutes a day of actual work. And then the rest of the eight hours is them just fucking clicking around on the internet. No, but I would, I would guess more than that. But I think it is something like a, a good, say, two hours of like real work that has to be done that might be spaced out throughout the day. And then just a lot of bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. You know what it is? It's physical labor. Not not like the office stuff. It's the physical labor. Just they don't want nobody wants to do it anymore. Well, the physical labor you're not going to be able to fake. For the most yes. part. Yes. You know, the physical labor you can just don't fake it. All the other shit. Like Natalie, 
The girl does no work. What? Here's the, here's Natalie. What I consider work. Okay. Yes, you do, Natalie. No, she does no work. Please what, elaborate. What I consider work, mm-hmm. like, is you do something. So right now, you're not do something. Working. Jerk me off. <laughs> She's not working. She's staring. I'm using my brain. No, well, you can't say this isn't work. She's doing what she's supposed to be doing. She's doing what you hired her to do. Well, I need you, you to move I more. Do. I need you to move around a little more. Dance, maybe. Could My you just do like a shake working. weight while you do this? <laughs> my leg is always moving. Like right. I'm always shaking my one leg, restless leg. Mm. All, all you guys are doing, and all I'm doing is moving our lips. That's that a lot work? of work. That's a ton no, of work. No, no, no. There's fucking shit firing off in the brain, going to the mouth. There's a lot going on. Here. Also, by the way, I love your Tim Pool costume that you wore today. It's really cool, Dave. That's not doesn't really hit home with me. Tim Pool's a great guy, and this is a completely different hat. What did I say? Somebody said you're a Nazi because you're on Tim Pool's podcast. No, uh, there was a um, a guy from Media Matters who did a, a hit piece on Tim Pool, and he went through all, all the, people, all the, the Nazis guests, that all the guests on. he's had on in the, the last year, and, and I he made it. Elbows with you're not even friends with Gavin. Uh, well, he, that's the association. Yeah, it's a weird. It was a weird one that they picked that. But he quoted from uh, that fucking bitches article that he wrote about me. Yeah. So he quotes he's a Nazi sympathizer or whatever, and then said uh, his his editorializing of it was with connections to Gavin McGinnis, the white nationalist leader of the. How Proud do you not Boys have sympathy for Nazis? Yeah, I've se- well, I I also say I have I have, I have sympathies for almost every group. Yeah. Like I don't. There's not too many groups Except I don't have sympathies for. The Jews. Yeah. Any well, other group though? I, uh, I I I've. By said, the way, they would take this. Like, they could easily just take this conversation and be like, and sitting next to Dave Smith, neo-Nazi Louis Gomez, Louis J. Gomez says, "You correct I yourself." No, I have, yeah, I did. I have no sick. They wouldn't put. They wouldn't include the J. I know they wouldn't include <laughs> the J. <laughs> Assholes, cunts. <laughs> Uh, they'd be like, yeah, uh, he, and I quote, I have no sympathy for the Jews. When I was obviously being very serious. Yeah, they would make it out like you were kidding. Coop's a fucking Jew. Uh, You're a Jew too. I, I have it all the sympathy time you... for the Jew. I, I am a Jew. And uh, I, but I've said, I've said openly before that I have sympathy for uh, Al Qaeda members and I have sympathy for, like, I, I, I don't think it's that crazy to be able to go like, Look, even really bad people, you could kind of understand some of like what might have led them to be really bad people. You know? Like I don't know. I, I've just always been able to understand that shit. I understand like kind of like the fucking you know, when people be like, Why do like, you know, uh why are like black kids in the hood like thugs? Why do they like sag their pants to associate, you know, associate with the prison shit? That's where it comes from is they used to take your belts away in prison. So they'd sag their pants and shit. Why are they like, fuck the police? And why are they? And it's like, yeah, because fuck you. They just feel like they've been fucked over by this whole system. So it's like, fuck you, motherfucker. I'll be a thug rather than be fucking anything else. I understand if you're some Al Qaeda like fucking soldier. I would understand <clears throat> if you were in a country that was like the sh- bombed fucking for 10 years and then you're like, I'll join up with the terrorists to go fuck those guys who bombed my <laughs> village. I don't know. I get that. Yeah. Anyway. What about Ally uh, Quinta? What about Ally Quinta? Yeah. Would you have sympathy for him? Yeah, completely. I mean, th- the last minute you got to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov. <laughs> <laughs> you go five rounds with him. And then I the next thing you know, you can't even get a good fucking fight after that. You're telling me you're you took Matt Serra's shit for 15 years? Yeah. Anyway. But yeah. So he I fucking, actually blame Ally Quinta he for went, 9-11. So you should know. At, Alan Quinta was very involved in 9-11, for the record. <laughs> That's not a joke. That's just what happened. Uh, um, but anyway, so then this guy, so I fucking said some shit to him back, and then he fucking, he went on private. I think his account's been on private since then. But it's like, good, fuck you, bitch. Yeah. You know, fucking talking shit about everyone. <clears throat> At least, um, you know, I think I'm lucky, and, and like you, I guess, get this too. I get a little bit more of it because I'm like political and shit, but uh, – I'm lucky that I almost came in this generation. Like, there's, like, the people who were, like, got really big around, like, 2015, 2016. Yeah. And I was kind of, like, under the radar then. And I got bigger, like, almost later. And it was almost like... People the, are rolling their eyes at this They're point rolling their eyes at the, the accusation well, that you're like a Nazi. Well, it's like when they're calling Rogan a Nazi. It's, it's like, just too it just far. Gets, we, you know, that's the problem with that guy, Seth Simons. He started writing these articles. You're like, dude, you're just... You're just such a stretch. When you start calling Rogan a Nazi, and the... I mean, only the a very small percentage of people believe that Joe Rogan's a Nazi. It's like this extreme left version of fucking like 
online people. It's not even extreme left version of people in the real world, but it's like this small percentage of people that want to like, you know, yeah. paint that picture. And when you're trying to have write an article to get a lot of people behind it, people just sort of roll their eyes and they, and then you sort of lose credibility for everything else in the article as well. So yeah. The, um, well, and, and in a way I'm lucky for that. The, the weird thing that's like a disconnect is like, it's the, the thing is that it's ding. what the ding is. It's what words mean to you in a way. Like, if you see when someone says to me, "Oh, you're a Nazi sympathizer," I go, "You're that's you're an insane person." Like, because what I'm thinking is like, you're you're actually telling me that you think I sympathize with like like I I'm somewhat of a soft supporter of the fucking. Please stop doing this. It's the most distracting thing in the world. What? It's just awful. What? Uh, it's just popping this little popper <laughs> thing. Anyway, uh, that place, I just can't. I can't. I, Take I can't it away from me. Uh, but if you're like, oh, so you sympathize with like the the German National Socialist Workers Party I do. that rose up in the 1930s and like led a genocide. And you're like, wait, what? Yeah. Like, that's insane. But then they go, no, we mean Gavin yeah. McGinnis. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay. They're like, calm see, down, see, literal see, Larry. No. <laughs> like, you're like, okay, I see those as being kind of different things. Yeah. So I, I don't know. But, but that that's the thing. I think by their definition of Nazi. We are Nazi. I'm a Nazi. Yes, yeah, fine. Yes. Fine. fine. You know what? Actually, we've made progress here. They're right. <laughs> to be honest with you, it's just they're, the, the, the general public wears their definition. And sort of this fight it, yeah. amongst the two different very extreme sides to move those definitions around, right? So once the public lands on that, like we could very well <laughs> be Nazis. It just depends on how hard they fight. And I think people on the left are so much more willing to fight that fight harder. Yeah, we just got other shit to do. We want to make money and raise our kids. Um, all right, let's talk about some MMA. There's, but there's no MMA news, right? Except for Well, you know what thing. it took out the Nazis? What? MMA fighters, if they existed back then. How about been. that? Yeah, maybe. Unfortunately, we didn't have them. We had to go with boxers. None of them had takedown defense. Dude, also, I bet you that the Nazis would have had a fucking solid MMA training program. If MMA was around, yeah, almost certainly. <laughs> yeah, dude, for sure. Yeah. Unquestionably. The um, Nazis killed six million Jews all by rear naked choke. How many, uh, <laughs> dude, how many Nazi fighters have there been? There's been a few Too that far. like, so here's the thing, like MMA was such a fringe thing for a while. Mm -hmm. Um that like guys that were like Nazis got good at it, like actual Nazis. Like, mm -hmm. and it was like m more than likely because you see the tattoos on them, right? And you see like you do a close up on a guy who's like in a pretty high level MMA fight, and it'll be a dude with a Nazi tattoo. I think very often those guys were in prison, and they were yeah. maybe you, you sort of have to join the the Nazi club. Uh, what Coop? I see you. There's this uh, MMA league online that's been growing in popularity called King of the Streets, and it's like no hold bar. They fight on concrete with shoes, and that has a lot of neo Nazis and like white nationalists in it. And it start. I think it's in Sweden. They fight in abandoned warehouses. Ooh, please pull it up. Yeah, I would yeah, love let's to see this. some of this. That sounds awesome. I would love to watch Nazi MMA. I sympathize warehouse. with them. I'll yeah, say yeah. that. Dude, on concrete, do they get hit their head on the ground? It's crazy. That's just that's just silly. Yeah. Um. There's been, uh, I, I mean, well, there's been one big piece of MMA news this week, which we're, we're going to get into as well. <clears throat> but well, um, I got something to address real quick since please. you're kind of stuttering here. There it is. There it is. It think? is our 50th show. This is our officially oh. our first year as a, as a podcast. And while we've already gone through <laughs> what is and is not a Nazi. Mm hmm. I just want to say congratulations for one year. I wanted to show something. This is a throwback here. I know you guys go back longer, but I go back a ways with you too. So, uh, Natalie, if you could throw that up. Popcorn. As soon as you knew the joke was called Shadow Popcorn, we should have stopped. All right, pause it. Trick out of joke. Eastville Comedy Club. This is Eastville Comedy Club. This is me doing one of my old standby tricks, Shadow Coins, but I did it with popcorn. I called it Shadow Popcorn. Oh, look, before Lewis got those teeth fixed. Damn. Why do my teeth look so bad there? My teeth, I've never had my teeth fixed. They just look really, they look weirdly bad there. They do. That's not it's, how my it's teeth It's the lighting, look. <laughs> but I just want to. That looks psychotic. <laughs> look at my teeth. I swear I don't look like that. God damn, dude. It look like a fucking troll mouth. Shut up. Shut up, up boy. This is the hammer. Ooh, this is the old hammer fest thing. 
My my son's mother is behind the bar right here. This is when we were together. Twenty other inanimate objects. Yes. He's like David <laughs> Blaine, folks. The poor man's Puerto Rican David Blaine. Man, you do look young though. I look young as fuck. That's Mike Ford. The old Mike Ford. Former hammer fisting co-host. Look at these old sluts that are hanging out at Eastville. Me pretending not to notice women because Beatrice is there. <laughs> Look him up on the internet. Mike Ford. Now Lewis uh, runs an Uh-oh. anime podcast, but has no chokes. Tap me out uh, before Dave. When Dave can tap me out. Get his crotch out of my lap, Dave. For your thing, come on, it'll be a great. Jesus, didn't tap. Who's gonna put me up? I kind of like Lewis. Dean Edwards cares. That's the only person that cares. This is great. I've always done coke magic, folks. Oh, come on. What is wrong with you? You know what I love about me? I love there's just something cool about going. If presented in a lineup, could you tell the difference between Carlos Condit and Nick Diaz? You, you just pretended to be a UFC fan, and you still can tell the difference between Carlos Condit and Nick Diaz. Can anybody in this room? Spicy. What was a this? decade ago? What I was, was doing this? MMA. <laughs> this is who we are outside of work, outside of the podcast. This is the Hammer Fisting yeah, MMA blog. Was no, it? we would do a blog. The Hammer Fisting blog. Saying? I used to goad you into doing MMA jokes on and bomb completely at East Village. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, dude, you won't do an MMA joke. And I was like, I'll do it right now, dude. I'm doing obscure MMA references. This is so long ago. You have to, how long ago was that, Vic? I think 2011, that one is. It has a date at the beginning wow, of it. Man. That is fucking 2011. 12 or 13 years ago. How crazy is that, dude? Yeah. How That's wild something. is that, dude? Look how young we were. I just yeah. wanted to put that up there because we've known each other for a long time now, the three of us, and you guys know each other even longer. And we used to have a lot of fun with the hammer fist. I had another video of Lewis going crazy because Vic, are you crying with- right now, you <laughs> fucking homo? I'm not crying, but I-, I have a good time with you guys, and I think it's been a fun year, by the way. Yeah, this is great. I'm I'm glad we kind of revived us doing an MMA podcast and all that. God damn, weird to see those old times. It's old times. It all started. It was it was full circle. Uh, we we all ju- we just started doing an MMA podcast. That's what it was all about, baby boy. Well, me and for you, nobody for like 200 people listening to it. Well, me and you started. I mean, dude, when we first did it, this was before we did Legion of Skanks or anything else. The first podcast we ever did was the original Hammer Festing yeah. podcast. And it was, yeah, just a fucking... I mean, way before Legion of Skanks. Like, years and years yeah. and years before Legion of Skanks. So, um, yeah, some of those episodes now are still have, out there. Now we have Coop and Natalie, who are just, uh, you know, they're joining the tradition. Matty Jester Skulls used to be the producer. Yeah. Of Hammer Fisting. That was the low end of it. Not to insult Matty Jester Skull. <laughs> that, was, that was when it should have... It should have never went that far. We Great, have Chris Tinkle. It was nice to see him out at uh, Skank Fest. Yeah, we did. Well, this is uh that this all kind of leads into or, or not leads into, but yeah, I guess the old the, school the big MMA. story uh, of the last forty eight hours in MMA here is that Stefan Bonner uh, passed away of heart complications at the age of forty five. Yeah. Um, Stefan Bonner uh, clearly vaccinated, and uh, no, I'm kidding. I don't know any of the stories of how he died, but uh, he was like one half of kind of the reason why the UFC took off and me and you were <clears throat> huge like we became huge fans right before this thing exploded yeah which made it made it a very cool it's just a very cool thing if you could imagine I now w- would you define yourself as a as like the ultimate fighter making you a fan because I, I would for myself des- I would I describe think myself as ultimate no, 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 no. It was absolutely. It was a coincidence. No, me and you became fans because the uh fucking where we live, me and Lewis were roommates years ago in this apartment in Brooklyn. Uh like when we first started stand up comedy. And when I say first started, I mean like the very, very beginning. This is so now we're going back like sixteen years ago or something like that. And uh we there was a blockbuster video down the block from us. And there, they had a UFC section there. That's what made us fans. 
That's why we became fans, because we were looking around Blockbuster Video, like, let's fucking get something and watch tonight. You kids listening. At the time, there wasn't internet shit you could watch. It was just you had to go to a fucking video store. And yeah. fuck, and you they had you these... literally couldn't. This was MySpace generation. Maybe was, even before. We was, didn't have MySpaces at this time. There was. We might have. Neither uh, of us had a MySpace. Can I tell you why I think we did? I didn't. Or I did. I certainly You were my top eight on MySpace. This is right around that time. The, the only nope. reason I'm saying this is because on MySpace, you got to design your page. like It was almost like an HTML website, like the original version of MySpace. Um, and one of my things, I had like a like an ultimate knockout compilation. Yes, but this is a couple years later. Okay. What you're talking about. I remember we were at Stand Up New York when I started my MySpace page, and this is before I started comedy. Mm. Now that was only like two years later, but this is like uh, I remember years before that. New York, your your profile picture was you on stage at Stand Up New York. Now I'm remembering right. this. Yep. Yes. Uh, so the this, but this is um. So we went there and we just saw, oh, there's this UFC show. Oh, remember Hoist Gracie and shit from the 90s? Let's fucking rent some of these. And then because we I ended originally up... watched the first UFC yes. ever live on pay-per-view. <clears throat> Thought it was just okay. I was like, yeah, the brutal shit was cool. But honestly, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu was, you know, you we were so uneducated <clears throat> about like, what it was. It doesn't even make sense. This is weird. It literally looked like he was simply grabbing onto him, holding him. And then the guy would start tapping. Yeah, it, it was very, uh, you know, at the time, you know, this would you have to give you have to give Joe Rogan a ton of credit because he, throughout the years of commentating mixed martial arts, has educated people on what jujitsu is. You, you, I mean, we started watching it even at that time where you're, you're talking where we became fans pre Ultimate Fighter One era. That time people would boo when it would hit the ground yeah right you were talking about it was literally it was hit the ground people start booing immediately and these were fans at the ufc event um ultimate knockout videos that we rented i i remember i had a moment with rogan where we were like at a uh at a show we're in the green room at a show dude i get it and uh All right, fine. Well, gotta, well because and okay, so, so i, I had go, one of many moments with rogan yeah i mean it's one of thousands you can't even count them but and, and we were talking backstage, I guess. I'd been drinking a little bit through the night and like we were just like bullshitting backstage. And I was like, dude, isn't it fucking crazy that like when you used to, you remember back in the day when you would announce MMA, you would be announcing like you had to explain to everyone watching what's happening. Because you used to announce where you'd be like, okay, he's got him in his guard. You see how his legs are wrapped around yep. him there? That means he's in his guard. He, and he's from controlling here, his hips. From here, he, he can throw now, in order for him to have to, he's going to have gonna to pass, pass his guard. feet. And I go, but now, like, you don't even have to do any of that because fucking, you just assume everyone knows yeah. what their guard is. I go, is that fucking crazy? And he just like, uh, <laughs> he responds, and he goes like, well, yeah, people know now. <laughs> it's just there, and I was like, I, I mean, whatever. I guess I'm not just kind of fanboying. Not to suck Rogan's <laughs> dick. Because I'm just fanboying out. But, the, but all right. The part of the reason that people know was because you of taught him, him yeah. dude. Like that's. But like, but it was a the, moment it, where it I was, was going. Uh, an but isn't it so cool of, of UFC fans and mixed martial arts fans to learn what it is? And now the average mixed martial artist, if you've never taken a day of jujitsu in your life, you know what mount is. You know. So, I mean, you just uh, we became really hardcore fans. Like we would grapple each other in the living room. We would get drunk and stoned. Mm -hmm. We would do. Gomez Smith Jiu Jitsu in the living room. We had yes. our Gomez Smith uh, Grappling Academy, which was we both made it to the top of that <laughs> academy. Both black belts. And <laughs> that's where I got my cauliflower ear. My cauliflower ear does not come from Jiu Jitsu. My cauliflower ear, which you can see very clearly, yeah. comes from Gomez Smith Grappling yeah. back when we were teenagers. And they didn't, and they're, they notoriously did not hand out black belts easily. Can I tell you why I have cauliflower? Because it's not even I've grappled so much. One of the things we would do, we would allow open palm strikes to each other's ears in Gomez Smith grappling. <laughs> so it would uh, be, such a bitch. We just box each we'd other's be ears, fucking boxing each other's ears over and over. It was wild. Yeah, it actually, it, dude. It was me, you, and West. Our buddy West was like an actual like collegiate wrestler, and he really wasn't down with our shenanigans as much. We'd catch him once in a while into it, but me and Dave would just regularly like. It's out of nowhere. It was just it would happen nightly. At one point, it was so it was grab too your hard. Wrist, you'd grab my wrist, and all of a sudden, we'd be just on the couch rolling around with no one on watching, <laughs> <laughs> boxing each other in the ears. It was psychotic. Was we were young and we were watching this shit, and then but anyway, to the, back to the point. So that's how we became fans. But it was such a cool thing. If if you know if, if you could imagine, I'm, maybe there's some other people out there who kind of found the sport in the same time. But to get into something that was so niche that it was like, oh, there's that's crazy that there's a few DVDs about this in Blockbuster. Yeah, and then 
as we got into it, we were like, wow, this is so fucking cool. All of a sudden they go, they're launching a reality show. Yeah. And this was in the reality TV era yeah. still. Like, Real that World was, was real on thing. TV, Road yes. Rules was on TV. This was, and this was a this big deal. The, 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 the format of taking 16 strangers, putting them in a house, fueling them with alcohol, and and hoping they would get into a fight maybe, well, fuck that, dude. Every episode, we're like, oh, we get to watch these guys do all that other shit, and, and then, then they fight. fuck each other up at a very, very high and level. And the show didn't do very well. No. And in fact, it had major problems where all of the advertisers pulled out. And I didn't even know this till later. I just thought at the time when we watched it, it was like, oh, that's pretty fucking cool that the, all the commercials... Are for the UFC. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, it's like I didn't even like think through they the implications of that. They, that they, go, they go, wow, this is so cool that not only does the UFC have a reality show, but even all the commercials are just for the UFC. But what happened, of course, is that no advertisers would sign on. So UFC said they, they were run by these fucking billionaire fucking casino people at the time. So they were like, well, what if we buy out all the advertising? Then will you give us a show? And they, that was the agreement they made. And so by the, the way, show... I, dude, shout out to fucking Dana White, the Fertitas, for having the vision to go, we need to just get this in front of people. Yep. And, and, and by the way, and this was pre-internet. They, they wouldn't have needed to do it today. Today, the, with the internet, it's almost like you wouldn't need the networks. The same way that yeah. comedy has sort of taken it back, right? And podcasts have gotten huge. Comedy Central has fizzled out to where it's just a website now. There's no, like television and, and that side of the industry can be, became obsolete because the internet... But it's hard when, to explain to people who living are living today that 16 years ago, or whatever the fuck it was when there was the Ultimate Fighter was on, that was not an option. The only way to blow up then was deal. to be on people's living room boxes yep. that they watched. That was the only way to get on there. And so then they have this uh, Ultimate Fighter finale, what the whole show builds up to. And the main event was Forrest Griffin versus Stefan Bonner. And, you know... I always like you're you're I think you're right about this shit. Like you talk about like the butterfly effect a lot. I know you really like that. And I always felt like that's a little like I don't know. That's that's like above my fucking intellectual ability to like really understand that shit. But I do think that people have th this um people operate under this belief that like if something happens, then it was inevitable that that thing was going to happen. Like mm. it's oh it, UFC was going to blow up. This was going to be a thing. But I don't really think that's right. I think that it's like things happen, and if one thing didn't happen the the, the way it did, maybe none of this ends up following Agreed. it. And what happened there was that Stefan Bonner and Forrest Griffin had the most fucking insane fight ever, and they had real metrics on this that like Dana White's talked about before, where they said like it was something like a few hundred thousand people were watching it, the, and by the, the end of, of it, fight, it was yeah. like <clears throat> millions and millions of people were watching because people were calling their friends and going, yo, throw on Spike TV right now. This is happening, and the sport, it was like night and day. Yeah, it exploded. It's, it's really interesting if you go watch... I think it was there was the pay per view after that fight card. If you go watch, I think it was Randy Couture, Chuck Liddell, uh, two or three. I can't remember. I think it was two. But they're at the beginning of the pay per view. They're like, we're in a new world, boys, because yeah. all of a sudden this sport is mainstreamed, and all of a sudden it jumped from being like pay per views would sell like, you know. A, tens of thousands maybe they'd get like 20 30 thousand sales for their pay-per-view to be like they're getting hundreds of thousands to yeah. getting like crushed almost up to a million and shit like that and it just changed <clears throat> everything if that didn't happen if stefan bonner wasn't who, in that who fight knows? It, look here's like the ufc and mixed martial arts obviously it was special they've already gotten it to a pretty crazy place and i do think that it would have still exploded um but i do deeply believe in chaos theory and 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 who knows who knows who knows what i mean it was such a, a crazy momentum shift and you know it, we uh, unquestionably the ufc wouldn't look exactly like it looks today that was such a crazy fight that and it's I not think a guarantee propelled the sport in a very very fast yeah. way because um, it could have been a dud, you know, and there was things that held them back too, like the first the the first event on Fox where it was like a weird behind the ear knockout with uh, Cain Velasquez and um, Junior Dos Santos, and it was they only decided to put one fight on that night, and then the co-main event was this crazy fight with Clay Guida and was it Jim Miller? 
Well, I don't, I don't why remember. am I saying it's Jim Miller, Clay Guida? I have no idea. I was, I'm almost positive it was Clay Guida, though. But apparently one of the best fights like ever, and it wasn't televised um, for no fucking reason, right? It was just, in hindsight, it's always 2020, right? So, because um, they thought there's no way Cain Velasquez versus Desanos was not going to be this crazy firework of a fight, right? Um, so, I, I don't know. But all I know is that unquestionably, that was the most important fight in MMA history at the time. Unquestionably. It's not, it's not even and debatably debate. still. Yeah. Debatably still, because it, it, was, it was the one that like got people to realize, like, oh, this sport is amazing. That that fight, and Dana White and company have said this, and, and this is why I think it's kind of sad, because if you see Stefan Bonner on social media, he's had some problems. Obviously, and I don't know, and I don't want to speak out of turn, but it seems like there was some issues with alcohol and drugs. I know he got a DUI, I think, at one point. I, I, please fact check this, because I don't want to disrespect. He, got a DUI. he did get a DUI. Yeah, I don't want to disrespect the fucking guy who just passed away. But I'm not disrespecting him. What I'm saying is I think it's sad that he fought one half of one of the most important fights. He's a UFC Hall of Famer, but he's still having financial problems. So, like, I, I don't know, dude. If I was a bazillionaire, right, and there was somebody who helped me build my company, I would just personally make sure that that person never – And, and I, Yeah, I, I would give that person $1,000. I would yeah. I would just make sure that that person wasn't having those types yeah, of problems. Yeah. And maybe Dana White and company tried and, and tried yeah, to Yeah, you don't and, know. Because you know, giving someone money in those situations isn't always, you know, what is going to be the solution just for them. Just something. I don't know. I don't know the story or the details behind, like, his death. But I do know that that dude was a humongous part of why the UFC fucking took off yeah. and why that and that fight was like at the time at least it was just bonkers and he always kind of Stefan Bonner always no, kind of got the short <laughs> he always kind of got the short end of the stick like he lost that decision which was like razor close you yeah. know what I mean and then Forrest Griffin kind of went on to be like a huge star and that but uh and Forrest got a lot of the TV work acting work yeah. you know Stefan but once again wherever you go there you are those demons that seem to be with him today maybe were a uh, part of the reason why he wasn't able to, you know, put the career together the same way that some of these other guys were able to, because, you know, he, you know, the opportunities in front of you, you know, I shouldn't say, I, I'm going to almost take back what I was saying. It's not up to any guy just to hand some other dude fucking money, right? The reality is you're one half of the most important fight in UFC history. Parlay that into some crazy shit, right? And if you don't, you know, that's partially on you. It's, you're not really owed anything because Forrest Griffin, I'm sure, has a very nice, you know, I, I, once again, I don't know, but I'm assuming Forrest Griffin's doing pretty fucking good. You see guys like Michael Bisping, who won the Ultimate Fighter, absolutely killing it. Yeah. A lot of these guys that are from older generations, they figure out how to parlay that fame and that success into something um, substantial. So I just kind of see Stefan Bonner, and it does seem kind of sad when he's getting the DUI. He's, you know, what, what, uh, what were some of the, there was there was like a whole bunch Didn't of his problems house burned recently. down and we he, talked about his that? house burned down he had some i think he had some financial decisions more or less that really kind of put him back Gosh, he's dead now. i can say stephen bonner probably burned his own house down we know that right? <laughs> we, can all, we all agree on this now yeah he had some uh he had some medical issues though from uh, pro wrestling and some other things and he retired from all type of physical things but he was working i think uh, tyrone woodley donated a lot of money to him yeah remember we talked down. about that on the show mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and he was doing a lot better but apparently this is all just a heart thing a lot of that going around yeah i mean look the, the look pro wrestlers regularly pass away early right he was doing a lot of that i if there's a hard thing you know my assumption it wasn't just had a heart attack. I'm assuming he was on a fucking bunch of painkillers or some shit like that. Yeah, no, a lot of pro, uh, a lot of pro wrestlers, a lot of pro vaxxers, they all have heart problems. Yeah, did, did it say anything else? No, he just looked like he was having some issues. No, yeah, it, all, it just, all we know, it, it all it says is pretty much heart complications. And then as for the DUI, it says that some bystanders had to restrain him, so he must have been like really, really uh, off the sauce. Yeah, but what year was that, Coop? That was a while back, though, right? Yeah, it says, hold on, let me see, let me see, let me see. It's This is back from 2018, so that's like four years ago. Yeah, it's got a little bit of, uh, so look, here's the thing. Let's let's do some plugs. What we decided we're going to do, just because this is such an important fight in history, and it's a, there's no other news in the world of mixed martial arts right now, it's perfect timing. We're going to actually watch the Forrest Griffin versus Stefan Bonner fight. To, just to like we did at the time. Me just and like you sitting time, back baby. watching the show. And uh, you guys, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> If you guys are watching on uh, YouTube after this comes out on Gas Digital, you guys can uh, just link up the fight, sync up the fight, and watch it along with us. Um, we'll give you a, a second to do that, and we'll do our plugs. So, Dave, what are you plugging? 
Uh, okay, got, um, of course, me and Louis J. Gomez will be at the Comedy Store on New Year's Eve. Our, uh, the show that we were doing sold out, so we did open up another show, an early show. Go grab some tickets for that if you guys want to come out and spend New Year's Eve with myself and Louis J. Gomez. Colin Terrell is on the show. Crackamico is coming out to the show. Sam Tripoli just added. Sam Tripoli yeah. just added Zach, to the show. Zach Are you fucking out. kidding Zach me? Zach come out, so we got the great Sam Tripoli. Ah, that's a bummer about Zach, but also... Karen Feehan. Yeah, there you go. All right, Karen Feehan coming out for the show. It's going to be a great time. Make sure you come out, spend New Year's Eve with us at the Comedy Store. And then we added New Year's Day, the night of New Year's Day, a live Legion of Skanks. Big J is going to come meet us out there in uh, in Los Angeles. So that's another. Those tickets are moving real fast. So if you want to come out to the New Year's Day live Legion of Skanks taping, please go buy tickets. You can buy it at the Comedy Store's website. I got the ticket links up at uh, comicdavesmith.com uh, as well. So come grab those. And then uh, in the new year, January, um, I will be January 20th and 21st. I will be out in uh, St. Louis at the, uh, what's it called there? Funny Bone. The Funny Bone in St. Louis. Uh, come out there. I got Rob Bernstein coming out with me for that one as well. January 20th and 21st. Me and Rob Bernstein will also be in Maryland. I don't have those ticket links up uh, yet, but in January we will be. I'll get them up in the next few days. ComicDaveSmith.com. Of course, part of the problem is right here at the Gas Digital Network and uh, Legion of Skanks. What do you got, Lewis? A uh, lot of life stuff coming up, guys. Um, go to lewisofskanks.com for those tickets. Obviously, L.A. Um, that I got Washington, D.C. coming up the 5th through the 7th. We're celebrating January 6th with the Puerto Rican Rattlesnake in Washington, D.C., baby boys. Let's do it. Get those tickets right now. lewisofskanks.com. I'll be in Phoenix. I'll be in Cuyahoga Falls. I'll be in Minneapolis and a lot of other live stuff coming up as well. Subscribe to gasdigitalnetwork.com. Use the promo code YOMMA for a seven-day free trial. Get instant access to this show and all the other shows on demand, all ad-free, uncensored, and in one place, access to the racist live chat and many other member benefits. And uh, subscribe to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash PR Rattlesnake, where you can watch me play video games poorly every week. Uh, what do we got? Let's do this. Let's watch this fight, guys. It's a classic. It's a throwback. This is going to be one of many. We're going to do this. I've talked about this for a while. I want to watch UFC 1. Okay. Question. So I like, I like you make it so we can see it bigger, can, can but they see it yeah. like that. Yeah, let's. I I want to see it on the big screen. Yeah, audio good. Audio's fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, the reason we wanted it that little is uh, it looks you guys. We feature you guys. We don't have to freeze it. No, they I want can, them to see, see that, now. but I want us to see it big. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. fine. Beautiful. Natalie's just yelling at me today. Natalie knows what the she fuck's up. She really put you in your place, Vic. She did. Mazagati, you remember how, how bad Mazzagatti, a ref he was? Does he not? He doesn't ref anymore, right? No. Uh, Dana White got him out of the UFC. He had this some is, of the craziest late stoppages this ever. This is back in the day. Everyone's wearing tap out shorts. Remember tap out? Their was only a sponsor. Brand? Yep. Saints Row. They had a video game. Toyo Tires. Yeah, those are the sponsors. Zenergy. And Zions. Zions Zenergy. You remember that? Yeah, back then you had to follow the Zions. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this, uh, it's so funny. I, I, now that we're watching it back, I wonder if it's going to be as Ooh. crazy as, they're just big fucking dudes, right? Two or fivers, right? But at the time, guys who could strike a little, could wrestle a little, and could do jujitsu a little was pretty nuts. Like, no one else was like that. Well, yeah, you know? these guys were true mixed martial artists. They're both guys with tons of subs, anyone, tons you know? of knockouts. Um, and they're both tough as fuck, dude. When you look at Bonner's record... Well, Bonner, lo- Bonner like, lost to John Jones and Mark Coleman, but still. And Anderson Silva. Yes, yeah. that's true. But those were like, you know, the best. Fuck John Jones and Anderson Silva. Yeah, I mean, truly. Uh, fucking the best ever. Yeah, truly, you know. Oh. Made Anderson look like the fucking man. It was, Anderson so, uh, mo- was it Anderson moving up to the first 205 for the first time? No, but it was moving up to 205. It was the first time against Forrest? Who was because Anderson fought no, no, Forrest. No, no. First time was against uh, that guy James. Oh, James, Irvin. James Irvin. Yes. Uh, but or first time in the UFC, at least. But you can see, so far they're just kind of like picking each other, you know, like fighting and like trying to do it. And there's a certain point where they just like. By the way, UFC get 63, hit and Hughes versus Penn. Dave watched without me, and I got so fucking mad. 
Uh, we were trying to find a place to watch it. Remember, we were like looking, we were like searching high and low, and you ended up watching it without me somewhere. Oh, well, you didn't find a spot. Yeah, you, I mean, what's kind of funny is you're, I'm watching Bonner when he gets hit. He's reacting a lot to the punches, yeah. which is just, you just don't see it in high level MMA like that. He's like a lot of like but wincing. I, I just remember at some point, like they're both kind of fighting, and then at some point, someone gets hit and they just decide to go. Wait to a minute, is this war. a rematch? Oh, dude, is this not the fight? God damn it! You you guys were watching the second fight. We're you watching gotta the be kidding fight. me. This isn't the fucking fight. Guys, this is. I mean, Jux Flux in the racist live chat. Are you guys got to be fucking kidding me? You have to be. I, kidding sent, me. I sent you guys the right one, the Ultimate Fighter one. You have to be fucking kidding me that this is happening right now. <laughs> you guys stink. I mean, this is. Like I was gonna say, I was like, it's just so not. I, like, I remember there being fireworks. <laughs> like, what's going on right now? All right, we're working. I have no idea how that happened, but we're working on it. God, I damn sent it. the. By the way, I sent the link, oh, and yeah. Coop, who's in, who's in charge of it. Called an audible apparently and thought he he got a better one. Is Coop, that what happened? Coop, Coop? What happened here, Coop? Yeah, Coop I saw goes, the link and I thought this video is way go to the official I'd go to the official UFC page. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. nope. that's all. Except gonna, the thing uh, is that they I fought mean, Coop twice. With three fucking minutes of a fight, Coop. They fought twice, yeah. and that's an issue. <laughs> it's it's so yeah. gas digital. It just wouldn't be gas digital if we didn't completely fuck it up, like in a massive way. The show was going great. We gotta wrap up soon. It's pretty fun that you didn't notice for three minutes. Well, yeah, it's not on us. It's the same We're two guys the fighting. Guys fight each other. Yeah, it's a, it took us and a and few minutes to realize. Yeah, this isn't the way the first one went. And my defense is really little, so. Uh, can we watch a fight now, Coop? If I send the link, it's like it. can we just keep that standard? If I send the link to use. Vic the link. is a goddamn television professional. You guys know this, right? You yeah. know this, right? How is this? I'll, this I'll make looks it better. Full. He's the head writer of Wednesday. You don't know that? No, no. As long as you have the right link, we're we're good. Natalie, is this not correct? Anything. We're cool. Yes, Natalie. the Ultimate Fighter finale won. This is correct. Let's go. Here we go. This so has maybe just like up, move up to the point where they're fighting. There we go. This is it. And you see how much, by the way, how much smaller the arena is here? I should have known based off 548 that. 548 for this everyone is, syncing it up. This is like... 548 for everyone syncing it up. Thank you very much, Natalie. Still presented by Science. A six-figure contract was on the line, yeah. and they weren't going to specify where it was. Six figures is a big range, by it's the way. It's literally $100,000. It was... And yeah. it was... It was a six-figure contract that was based off of four $25,000 fights. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But also, like, six figures can just sound really good. Like, if someone's making eight hundred grand a year, they're making six figures. But also, if you're making 105000 By yeah, the way, I think this is a good thing that it happened this way. Why do you think it's good? You realize how much they had gotten even a lot better. Ooh, ooh, ooh yeah, these guys were just that. fucking. I mean, by so... the way, Ste... go ahead, Vic. I was just gonna say, Stephen Bonner was expected to just do jujitsu and kind of play it that way, but he did not play it safe. Yeah, the next, the next pay per view, Couture Liddell, Dave Smith with the memory. Yep. Go watch, if anyone wants to, go watch the beginning of UFC uh, 52, how uh, excited they all are that the sport just blew up. It's kind of funny watching it. It's, it, is, it's, it was a great fight, but like from a technical standpoint. Oh, yeah, they, the game's evolved a lot. It's, I mean, so such a difference between the level of guys that are fighting today versus back then. Um Oh, yeah, no question. But at the time, you were like, if you didn't know what this was, it was much more of like, it came off as like a rock'em sock'em type thing. Wait, is this? All right. Whoa. All right, now they're going fucking crazy. <laughs> it just got fun. They just started wailing at each other. And it's like, who the fuck wants it? Oh, 
And but the mix of like these Muay Thai knees and boxing and everything, like no one had really ever seen anything like this for the people watching for the first time, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, this is one, it, like, it's almost the culmination of the sport truly evolving, right? It was the ultimate fighter and, like, where this was here. It's like everyone was genuinely mixed Ooh, martial did arts. Did you see that punch Forrest Griffin throw? <laughs> yeah, these guys were just going fucking ape shit. Halfway through the first round. Oh, there was a takedown. See, Rogan yeah, or just, just way explaining, explaining yeah. oh, but but it was necessary back then. Forrest Griffin was always just very like really really tough, like yeah. that was like his thing. Um, so it wasn't even it was like he was a particularly good at any one thing. He was just super super yeah. tough and pretty good at everything. Fucking hook. Throwing these Bonner wild shots. Right again, to go oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's it was, it never was, happened yes, in a fight today. It, it was a sloppy war for sure, but it was just fucking fun. Yeah. There's young Dana White. He's like, all right, is my investment going to pay off or not? Damn. Ooh. Forrest Griffin. Who did Forrest Griffin win the title from? Shogun. Shogun. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, Rampage. Shogun won it from Rampage. Rampage. No, no, no. He won it. He beat Shogun, but then he won the title from Rampage. Oh, he got the title shot by beating Shogun. Yeah, that's right. And then Shogun beat him. That's also true. But he didn't get the title from him. Interesting fact: both of them fought Keith Jardine, but Bonner beat Jardine, and, and Griffin, lost Griffin to got Jardine. knocked out by Jardine. Jardine that's had right. like a little run where he looked Jardine like was he was a good gonna fighter. Be that dude, yeah, Jardine was a good fighter. He beat Chuck Liddell. Yeah, we met him in Times Square. Yeah, we did. I don't even remember these grappling, but I didn't remember yeah. these grappling exchanges. I mean, just going ooh, for the arm bar. The arm bar. Uh, you know, I remember um, Forrest Griffin was on Liddell's team, but he he went on and trained at Extreme Couture for like the rest of his career. Oh, yeah, think, yeah. You know? uh, What a fucking grueling sport. That's what I would have tweeted right here. <laughs> what a grueling sport. Hashtag Ultimate Fighter Finale. <laughs> By the way, Griffin, Forrest Griffin still works for the UFC, I believe. By the way, you, new management. you know what I, what did I, what did I hear this? I get into like, I like read like books or I listen to audio books of like fighters. This is a great thing. Do you know Big John McCarthy was going to fight in, like, the second Ultimate Fighter? Oh, yeah? But he was, was a Gracie student. And and I knew like, he was a Gracie student. They were like, student. no, you're not fighting fucking Hoist. But a lot of people were like, dude, Big John would have just won. He was this ma he knew how to strike. He knew yeah. jiu-jitsu. He was massive and fucking muscular and fucking really tough. No, maybe. Another, a little, another misconception is that they chose Ooh. Hoist... Over Hickson because the the juxtaposition of a smaller 170 pounder it would be more of like an advertisement for how effective G Gracie Jiu Jitsu was when the reality was Hoyler and Hickson had a massive falling out because Hickson opened really? his own school and he was like yeah fuck you you're not part of Gracie Jiu Jitsu you can like really like lost oh I didn't like, know oh, that yeah. it was a lot of infighting in the Gracie family. Oh. Uh, they would just look at cuts like right away back then. No one yeah. even knew. Yeah, it wouldn't wouldn't need to see you know, unless it's over the eye. You wouldn't really need to look at the cut right here. By we way, need a Jew. We need a Jew. Cage side. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I suppose he could continue to fight. 
Yeah, yeah his nose is broken. It's still, it's, it, I think it picks up a lot more even from this. By the way, it's really weird how different Dana White looks in these old uh, videos than he does. He had does. hair Ooh. in the old ones, right? Can I tell you, you know what? Stefan Bonner's fucking doing really good in this fight. I thought Stefan Bonner won that first round upon rewatching it. And he's up in this round. They, back th during this time, though, you would get a takedown, and they yeah, would like they would yeah. they would they would count that as so much. Getting, Ooh, getting on top oh, of somebody. Oh, Stefan Bonner's winning this fight, man! You guys killed him, <laughs> dude. All you had to do was give him the decision. That's got to be, like, the tough thing, dude. Like, if this is, like, your whole fucking life, just the whole what if. Yeah. Like, how many times you play through, like, every little moment of this fight in your head. See, now Forrest's coming back pretty heavily. Ooh. Joe used, to love, Joe used to love pointing out somebody looking at the clock to see how much time is left. Oh. Oh. Forrest's getting <laughs> fucked up. Just they're both like six three, two hundred and five pounds. They're big fucking tough dudes. But Forrest not... was nine and two going into this fight, and uh, and Stefan was seven and one. Ooh, big knee. Yeah, they gave them both contracts at the Goldberg end of this, right? Was great. Yeah, Goldberg was great at doing things like that. Like, just knowing it's a big moment and going, Welcome to the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Like, if you were just first watching this. Why'd they get rid of him? Was he his... his they started paying him too much, right? Goldberg? Yeah, his contract was like crazy, I think. I don't know. I don't remember what the thing was. New management didn't like him. They wanted John Anik. Yeah. And by the way, Anik's great. Anik's great, but I do miss Goldberg. Goldberg doesn't even work for Bellator anymore, by the way. Didn't he go to pro wrestling for a hot minute? Then he was doing another sport? No, they, he almost did, but Dana White talked him out of it. It was a, They wanted to use him in WWE. Yeah. Just imagine this was like the biggest fight ever for the company, and it ends up being this fucking crazy fight. You know what's kind of crazy? Think about how the average man... Oh, Bonner's winning this fight, man! Two of these punches from either of these guys would floor the average human. Oh, Just yeah. two punches from yeah. either one of these. They're big... You'd be like, I'm done. Big, I don't want to like, fight anymore. They'd put you on the floor with yeah. two... Literally just a one-two from either one of these guys on the chin. And these guys are just taking it over and over and over again. I, I think it's lost how tough these guys are. Because it's not like these guys aren't fucking... They don't hit hard. They do. Yeah, Granted, they do. Neither one is like a one-punch knockout artist. Yeah, but But still. for the average human being, they are. This is basically what's going to happen when you try to tell uh, James about Santa next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's James. James is Forrest. <laughs> I suck at handling. I wonder what age my son's going to be when he can actually beat me up. Oh, that's an interesting question. I'd say, well, how is old that, is he uh, now? What's He's his name? Fucking, what's his name? Who? James, uh... The fucking comedian. King of Queens. Oh, yeah, he was always a Kevin player. James. Kevin James, yeah. There we go. Also, his fucking Netflix special. P.U. Uh, guys, go check out his, ne his Netflix special, P.U. Dude, it was really bad. Yeah? James loves stand-up comedy, and it was rated like G. It was rated for like all, all ages or whatever, so I was like, oh, let's watch it. It was one of the worst. All right. And I thought he's, I think he's a really funny actor. I even well, think his old half hour was great. His old half hour I special remember, I remember was some of the really jokes. funny, dude. I remember the joke about like when you pretend to run because the car is in the street. It's mm. great. I just remember laughing. I gotta yeah, tell dude, you, I will say it looks like watching it back. 
I got two rounds for Bono right now. I didn't really watch the first round scoring it. Second round is definitely for Bono. He was way more aggressive, landed more. There, I, it seems like it was a no-brainer for the second. How, what 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 age? So my son takes jujitsu. I think he's nine now. He's gonna be ten in a few days. What? So what age can he beat you up? Not until twelve. No, I don't even. I, I mean, I think that he's gonna have to be into adulthood, into actual adulthood. Well, it depends on how this knee surgery goes. You know, he knows all your weaknesses, Lewis. He really does. Yeah, I mean, Forrest's going to have to come back pretty heavily in this uh, round. Was it that it was Forrest was more marketable? What was it? Uh, you know, I mean, sure, honestly, the judges I think gave it, was, it to him or whatever. But I think it was, I, I, it was, it was the was, takedowns. I think you're right about that. It was just the takedowns. Yeah, back in the day, you get a takedown, could literally stay on top for a minute, and that would mean more, like, more value than yeah. somebody landing a fucking head kick. Yeah. Which is crazy. Ooh, God. The new criteria I really like, but I think it, because we're old school UFC fans, it's it's difficult to get it into our head. But damage is the number one judging criteria. No, it's much better. It's much right? better, I think, for sure. And it's like so. So you have to look at how much damage the shots are. Big, heavy shots. Are they more damaging? Does it stumble somebody? If somebody stumbled by a big, fucking heavy overhand right. That's substantially more valuable than somebody being taken to the ground for a minute. If, right? they, if you don't do anything with it, you know? By the way, this is really making last week's blow for blow battle look really bad. <laughs> Coop had no heart. Ooh, Bonner lands a nice overhand right. Coop's got a heart of gold. One day he's going to prove it to you. Ooh. Out. Yeah, I Forrest still looks more fresh right now. He does. Yeah, so that's what's going on here. Oh, good shot right there. Really nice straight. Where's that fun boxing? Just a fucking like Irish guy fucking yeah. just representing the white race the right way. Well, I feel they both are. Yeah, you know what? You're right. <laughs> you're right, you're right, Dave. It's a banner day for white people everywhere. Oh, yeah, Shamrock and Rich Franklin was still coming up on the card. Yeah, it's hilarious. They had Shamrock passing the torch to Rich Franklin. I remember that fight. Rich Franklin, by the way, isn't he with 1FC? He's an executive over there, I believe. Yeah. But they don't got this in one FC. They don't. Could they re? Could oh. they? Could they reestablish the Ultimate Fighter as a brand? I, doesn't it still happen? It does, but nobody watches. No, nobody gives a nah, shit. Dude, reality TV is over, man. Yeah. I, I don't think it's ever going to be a huge thing again. And last season was a good season of Ultimate Fighter. I enjoyed all of it. I I, I didn't watch it. I believe you, but I think it had to be like an internet show of some sort. Now you know, like. I think Dana White's looking for a contender is just sort of taking, like, that's, that's an that's interesting show. It's just like in professional sports, they're compelling enough. You don't need a reality show around it, right? No, that was just, that, that was a moment in time, you know what I mean, where that was the thing. Reality TV was the thing. Remember the show The Contender? That was a boxing reality show that was like The Ultimate Fighter. It, it's something about, like, I don't know. It, reality TV, that era, I think, did change the country a lot. There was a time where it was like, oh, we don't believe the bullshit anymore. We want to be bullshitted, pretending it's real. <laughs> then things just got realer and realer. And then we hit the UFC as real as it gets, and we're like, what there do we do? Go. Only one place to go. Jersey Shore, ultimate Jersey Shore fighter. <laughs> it's so funny because, in retrospect, it's just like we've seen so many incredible fights this year that but, make this fight pale. But this was this was the implications of, the of what it was as well on network television. It was like 
for free. Everyone got to see this like it's such wild, a big deal, fight. man. Yeah. Such a big deal at that time. It is funny though, as you say that watching it back, like you're like, this would just be like, oh, it was a good fight. Like, it was a right, good yeah. fight. Maybe not even wouldn't even get fight of the night. Yeah. I've seen better fights get... Uh, well, look, it's also, like you said, just how sloppy it is would be of note today. You'd be like, wow, that fight degenerated into a sloppy slugfest. But it was so great at the time. Yeah. I think we've got to keep watching. Even Chuck Liddell and Randy Couture, who were watching that at the time, were so much more technically advanced than yeah. these guys were. Like, those guys would have oh, fucked yeah, they these, these guys smoked up. These guys know, up at yeah. the time. Yeah. At the time, they would have smoked them easily. Did they end up, did Chuck end up fighting either one of these guys? No. N not Randy either, right? No. Nope. Nope. Uh, Tito did. Yeah. Tito fought. Tito was, uh, uh, and also Stefan's last fight in Bellator. Was that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't even remember that. Lost, lost to Tito Ortiz. That's really what killed him. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's that. So, that at the, the end of it, they uh, here, just go to the decision. Go to the, go to the decision. It's coming up right now, guys. It's, if you just let it play out. No, let's we should skip a little. So funny, like the heavy metal guitar riff over the replay as they talk about it. It's so old school. Yeah, Remember really. when there was Spike TV was like a big deal? It was supposed to be like for guys. Yeah. It was for guys, Vic. Oh, this is after that far as one. Dana was so not camera ready. Scion. Oh, that's the car you Boom. want. <laughs> you got a new Scion, you, you get, loser. You get to look like an asshole <laughs> driving down the street every day. You got a brand new Swatch watch. <laughs> It's like, and nothing bad could possibly ever go wrong. Yeah. Devin Bonner, you'll be set for life because this year you're going to make $102,000. No Scion for you, though. <laughs> you don't get the Scion. You don't get the Scion, dude. You only have to fight six times. <laughs> All right, we got it. Uh, guys, thanks for watching. Yo, MMA Rap. Shout out to Yo Kratom. A trip down memory lane. Yo Kratom. Kratom. Yo Kratom.com. <laughs> Make sure you support them. Home of the $6 kilo. We'll be back uh, next Monday with another incredible episode. Until then, have yourselves a great week. Peace. <laughs>